Saab was an amazing opportunity. Unfortunately, they never had the runway. Uh, that would have been my Jetta moment at oh, the time. Oh, yeah, the Saab. Uh, I forgot Phoenix. about that. The Phoenix yeah, thing. Phoenix. Yeah, which was also an aero, uh, aero baby of mine because that we had a 2.5 drag on that car. It was it had some really trick stuff, but again, we Was never, there ever we, a working concept car? Yeah, yeah, that was a functional driving concept prototype that was actually oh, built man. on a new platform. It had a torque vectoring hybrid system. It was super advanced. We had a Google Android touchscreen before anybody. I mean, we were on the right track. It's just, unfortunately, you know, the company just didn't have the funds to get there. And oh, that's was, a bummer. It, yeah, we got a picture of that thing. How cool. What a bummer. Yeah, so, you know, and that, you know, again, this was really just ended up being, a you know, another research project for me in terms of aerodynamics and pushing the limits in that space. Uh, you know, it was very controversial when it came out, but it did what it was supposed to do. It shifted the conversation from... You know, when I first went to Saab, people said to me, wow, Saab, that's that's really risky. You know, why, why would you do that? And then after this car came out, it was like, wow, what does this mean about Saab? So it really shifted the combo, which is what we wanted, but it, it just didn't buy us enough time. Uh, you know, the SSC, when when Jared, as I mentioned, you, you know, when we met in Dubai in 09 and I saw the Ultimate Arrow and I, you know, I saw the speed and I saw the potential, I said, OK, you know, this is this is another kind of big stakes bet. Right. You know, put the chips in the middle of the table you know, attach my name to this, you know, bring everything, all my know-how, my team, you know, guys with, you know, a tremendous amount of know-how in, in design, aerodynamics, other, and, you know, let's make a go at this. And we really believed always we could get there. Um, the math said we could get there. We really approached this in a unique way. And, you know, then it was just the waiting game, you know, it's just kind of the longest pregnancy ever, this, this 10 year period. Uh, but, you know, it was worth it because, you know, all the extra testing that Jared did, and the amount of miles that Jared has at, you know, 250 miles an hour, you know, I, I don't know if many people can can rival, you know, what he's done, you know, in cars in terms of actually personally driving cars that fast, uh, you know, other than, you know, maybe, you know, the test drivers at Bugatti like Loris and, you know, yeah. Andy Wallace and these kind of guys. But uh, really incredible, you know, the, the tenacity that I think the whole team had to see this through all the way to the end. And, you know, I didn't answer your, your earlier question, but yes, when we broke the record, I was jumping around like a little kid. Like I, it was... <laughs> When you see when and when you guys see the data log when we release that, you know, I, I, I ask everybody to go back and watch the data logs of the last two crazy runs by other companies and watch the speed from two fifty up and then watch ours from two fifty to three thirty. And you're just oh, gonna so. be both way by just how fast it does it. It's it's not even that it does it, it's that it's still going. And Oliver actually lifted because he thought that you know, the speedo was actually stuck. So the speedo didn't look like it was still going, but he said that the car was still accelerating. But oh, I lifted, crazy. and he didn't. You know, there was just more there. So it's just, you know, who knows? Uh, you know, maybe some nutter will take it out at the Bonneville Salt Flats, and yeah, well, know, I, that's what I was thinking. I was thinking Bonneville. That would be awesome. Photo. It's a bit wider. Yes, this photo at Willow real, Springs. That's a weird, a real photo. Yep, that gives you a sense. Of oh, the dimension. here's a photo of one parked next to a Ferrari F40, and uh, I mean, if someone that, had to go on the track in those two, that's a good fucking day for somebody. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Although that's I'm OG, not OG in the new G right there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I mean, it's actually uh, yeah, it's not a very big car at all. It's a it no. it photographs bigger than it look than it looks when you park it next to an F40, and an F40 is a pretty small car. Yes, it's very dramatic because the the occupancy cell is really optimized to be as tight as it can without being claustrophobic. Mm. And so there's a tremendous amount of shoulder on the car and the car just has great stance because the, you know, the body was actually designed around the true wheel position. So we could always maximize the arrow around the vehicle uh -huh. and it just has a very unique aesthetic when you see it on the road. It, it's, it's really a spaceship when you see Zach, it. Zach, is there a photo with the doors open? How, how wide is the sill to get in this thing on the side? Is that a it's big climb? not very wide because oh, it, oh, it cuts in. Uh, yep. It cuts in. So oh yeah, is is actually the tub, so it's actually very easy to get in and out of the car. Ingress egress was actually yet another thing that I really had to think through to make sure that this car was really usable. Yeah, what a fabulous thing! So tell us about about uh, give us some some numbers here. And again, this is not going to go up until Monday. So whatever you yeah. whatever's good, give a, give us the goods. All right. So the goods are that I think I can talk about is we have established ourselves as the world's fastest car production car. We bested the existing record by, uh, boy, I want to say almost 50 miles per hour. I'm sorry. What? So, Wait, what? 50? So, what? <laughs> so we ran, we ran a two way average of 315 miles per hour. Get the <laughs> fuck out of here. 315 <laughs> miles an hour. Actually 315.8. If you want what? to get that. 
And that's the yeah. two way average. What's the fat? What's the peak? What was the peak, the peak one way? The peak we were able to achieve. And I'm just going to say that we didn't what? run out of car. We ran out of road. In Pahrump? In the is, world. The world ran out of road. <laughs> we, we ran out of road. We ran out of road. Uh, is 331. Holy shit. Jeez, dude. Oh my God. 331 miles an hour? That's so crazy. What? And who was dri who was driving? And, and the car was still accelerating. Just who, FYI. Who was driving? Oliver Webb. So Oliver is an amazingly talented driver, races in Le Mans, uh, great developmental driver. He developed the back mono. He developed uh, McLaren Center GTR, uh, has track records all over the place. Uh, just fabulous feel for the vehicle. 331 miles an hour? Yep. That's so crazy. Was that uh, the, the suspension set up the way it would be if you bought one, or would you guys have to Correct. like? No, this is a, so keep in mind, guys, this is a customer car. Wow. This is not a prototype. This is car number one. This car is actually residing in Philadelphia. And That's the worst place on earth to car. drive a car that goes 330 miles an hour. Well, I can't yeah, think of a really worse quickly. city to the own client, a car like that. <laughs> the client has plenty of track time and track toys, so he'll, he'll, he'll use it the right way. I promise you that. Dude, that what, is that's so bananas. That's it's so bananas. fucking crazy. And and when you see the when you see the data logger, you're gonna it's gonna blow your mind. You're did gonna you, be far away. Did you know when you were doing modeling and stuff for this that it would go that fast? Or, or when it went Actually, that fast? Like as a designer, did you just lose your mind like a kid? So so the answer the two answers to that question. So yes, mathematically, we actually did know it would go even faster than that. The question was, could we actually make it happen? Because it's not at that point, it's not even about the math anymore. It's about the three factors you can't control. So one is mother nature, yeah. because crosswinds will kill you quite literally. Yeah. Number two is, do you have enough road to get up? Not to get up to speed, but it's actually getting back down is the hard part. No shit. So this car accelerates so fast, it's, it's not the problem of getting up there. The problem is you need two, two and a half times the amount of distance to, to slow the car down because as the driver said, as Ali said, you can't actually press on the brakes at that speed. You that isn't just, surprising at all. In fact, I would I'd probably yeah. guess that you can't even lift yeah. quickly. You have to Correct. slowly back off the Correct. throttle. Because if you imagine exactly. like, imagine slowly upsetting yeah. that balance. Oh my god. But imagine how slowly you have to lift your foot and yeah. every second you're traveling however many thousands of feet. <laughs> so let me, let me give you the math. Okay. So at sixty miles an hour, we'll level set. At sixty miles an hour, you're traveling eighty feet per second. Uh-huh. 330 miles per hour, you're traveling almost 500 feet a second. You're traveling 480 feet per second. So basically, if you looked at Giant Stadium, you are at the tunnel at one end of Giant Stadium, behind the end zone, all the way to the other tunnel, you're traveling that in one second. That's I fucking mean, it's, crazy. It's literally the same speed as a handgun bullet. Like, that's how fast he was going. Ten, and, a mile in 10 seconds. Yeah. 10 seconds. <laughs> So, that. Yeah. so basically, you're so, talking about nature, what, you're talking oh. about the space, and then you're talking about the courage of the driver. And nature was against us. I'm not going to lie. We actually had really bad crosswinds that day. And we only did two actual runs. We did one warm-up run, and he did two runs, and then that was it. Because the car had more, but he's like, that's it. I'm done. He, he got moved two meters on two on his two high-speed runs. Literally, the, mm. earth, the, the wind picked him up and moved him an entire lane. That's None fucking sketchy. We've seen that road. It's two lanes with no shoulder. Yeah, so there's no I have margin been on that road a bunch. It's yeah. that, the no road between Pahrump and Vegas, right? Yeah, correct. Yeah, 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 yeah. That yeah. is so crazy. My, my favorite moment as a car designer was still in 05 when I was at Geneva Auto Show. I got to actually unveil the birdcage. Uh, Andrea Pininfarina let myself and the project manager uh, unveil the birdcage. And... You know, I got to stand there and, and it wasn't just the press days that were cool. I actually stayed for the first public day because I wanted to see the kids come and see the car. And because when I was a little kid, my dad used to take me to the New York Auto Show. I just remember being in awe of these concept cars. And so yeah. see, the see the faces of the little kids and go, yeah, maybe one of these little kids will someday be here, you know, showing her or his concept car, you know, or new production car or new Jetta for that matter, you know? Yeah. So that's. You know that's what it's all about for me i you know that's that's really where the real enjoyment comes in and seeing the the reaction and the enjoyment hearing you guys earlier when i told you the speeds like you know that that's that's what it makes it all worthwhile because you know Matt, you know this you put everything into this stuff this is yeah. this is you know this is when and this is why why i mentioned earlier you know 
this is 10 years that I've been, you know, six, you know, six, seven years on it full time. And then obviously the last few years, I've just been kind of cheering from the side and learning about the updates, uh, you know, as my life kind of, you know, changed. And, and at that point, my work was done. It was really about Jared testing and executing at that point, all the things that we had already proved out, you know, in data and in math and, and in design. So, uh, you know, this moment was just, just so special, you know? Yeah. Well, that, it's just, it's insane to hear those numbers. Three, I mean, a 315 two way average is insanity. Yeah. Um, it's over 500 kph, which, which was our goal because 500 kph is kind of the magic number, right? For a European manufacturer, and that's about 311. So, our goal was to do over 500 kph. And you know, we did, we had, <laughs> we had seven mile up to seven mile an hour crosswinds that day. You know, had, yeah. we had a day where it was like two, three miles an hour, a little more road. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, that's just ridiculous. And how are, how much is this thing? Like two million bucks? So, so it's around one seven five base, and then with options, you know, most customers are putting in a quarter of a mil into options. So it's about two. It's one of the great things course about Saab interiors is that they are driver oriented. You know, this is coming directly from the aerospace history, the aeronautical themes that we like to try to develop at Saab, uh, you know, really tapping into the best technology from jet fighters. So the entire driver orientation is, is much like a cockpit. It's wrapping around you, wrapping down and around you. All the controls are right at your fingertips. Uh, we have, of course, the, uh, the head-up display, which is a phenomenal piece of technology, which really is not just cool, it, it's really more of a safety factor than anything else. And we've got a, uh, a much thicker and smaller diameter steering wheel in this car, which really allows for greater driver control as we do the moose test. This new four-wheel drive system is really unbelievable as it transfers power from the front to the rear wheels. Uh, again, the comfort, the visibility, which again is helped by uh, you know, the visor windscreen, the, the wraparound windscreen, gives a great sense of safety, command of the road, uh, you know, the high sill gives a sense of protection, and of course you have all your luxury amenities. So you have the new infotainment system, which is uh, you know, combining hard disk nav with uh, the possibility of integrating any and all type of uh, music files you like so you can customize and, and even have, watch films and DVDs. So uh, it's uh, all in all pretty pretty remarkable car and it's a, it's a quantum leap for us. Uh, very exciting product and of course we're using this as a, as a jumping off point for the future as we develop new songs. So here we are with the, the new 2011 Saab 95. I'm Jason Castriota, the design director, and uh, I'm going to bring you through a few details about the car. So Saabs, of course, are known from being born from jets, and we really like to draw from our aerospace technology and heritage. So above all, in every Saab, you're always going to have a driver-oriented cockpit. So as you can see here with the new 95, the cockpit wraps around and envelopes the driver. All his commands, or her commands, are at your fingertips, literally, either on the steering wheel or just a, a small reach away. We also have the new heads-up display system, which you can't see now, of course, but uh, that allows for great performance and safety for the driver. The seats, of course, are leather-clad, very comfortable, very supportive, to allow for both long-distance travel and sportier driving. As we move out to the exterior of the car, Clean line, Swedish design, again, born straight from our history of aeronautical design. The front fascia of the car has what we all now recognize as the signature iconic Saab graphic. The large center grille, flanked by the swept back headlamps, what we call the ice block headlamps with the new LED indicators, as well as the nostrils. These twin nostrils are coming right from the inspiration of a jet fighter, the twin engines of a jet fighter to the visor windscreen, which again is take, taken from the inspiration of literally the jet fighter helmet, into the sweeping, very simple clean lines of the body side. This center fuselage, 
that reaches all the way back and the very distinguished C-pillar, which again gives this sense of speed but stability. The rear of the car is taking direct, direct inspiration from one of the latest and most successful concept cars, the Aero X, and this is featuring the new signature tail lamp graphic, this horizontal LED beam that signs the width of the car, giving the car a very unique stance and appearance as it's driving down the road in the evening. So you can see it both from the front and the rear, distinguished as a Saab and only a Saab.